Let's take a look at the technicals after this week's sell-off. Joining us right now is Chris Verone. He's head of technical and macro research at Strategus Research Partners. And uh, what are you seeing? It's, it's, it's hard to say sell-off after what we've seen, the, the huge yeah. upward trend. For I think it's really difficult to say sell-off right when, even though the headline indices are down with some of the momentum stocks getting hit, yeah. the breadth under the surface the last two weeks has been absolutely spectacular. And the rotation. Right. The rotation. I mean, let's talk about small caps. Last Thursday, they were 18 to 1 on the upside. This Tuesday, they were 17 to 1 on the upside. You just don't see days like that very often. And what's the gain been for the Russell 2000? It's been more than 12 or 14 percent. Yeah, actually, if you look at the five-day gain, yeah. it's in the 99th percentile historically. When you've seen moves like that, it basically has locked in a really good next 12 months, kind of in the 20 to 30 percent range. So I don't think that's out of the question if you're looking uh, a year out from here. Could this market consolidate into the conventions? I think absolutely. But what I think is more important, the spread between small and large, only four or five times in history we've seen it at this degree, this magnitude, 87, 99, 2016, and 2020. So I think this impetus, this impulse towards small I do believe has more durability than the consensus expects here. Okay, I'm going to throw 2020 out sure. because that was uh, an aberration, obviously, with a worldwide global pandemic. What, what do the other three instances of something like this tell you? What it lead up to? 99? You think, uh oh. So if, you look, at the, the if you look at the 99 2000 impulse, remember that bear market was exclusively a large cap bear market. Small caps went up in both absolute and relative terms for much of that period. And what you began to see in late 99 into 2000 were all these sudden surges of small versus large. And Becky, I would actually go back to 2021. Um, I wouldn't throw it out. And I wouldn't throw it out because it actually persisted for about 15, 16 months. So from but under weird, massive government spending and, and, and crazy things that were happening. Yeah. So then I would wonder today, what does the market see yeah. to really catalyze the small caps here? Maybe it sees meaningfully lower bond yields. But it, it, if it's lower bond, bond yields, that's one thing. Mm -hmm. And that could be the case, given what central bon uh, banks are considering right now. But if it happens at the expense of the large caps, then you've got some big concerns, too, given how far those stocks have run. If it's just a relative outperformance, yeah. that's one thing. If it happens while the, the mega caps really drop off, then that's an entirely different story. I think that's actually right. And the way you phrase that is perfect. We don't want this exclusively occurring at the expense of the big stocks. We want them working in unison. And I suspect they will because the breath has gotten quite good here. And you know, there was nothing kind of into this July period that would suspect that would uh, that, that would imply major top for large caps. There are very few big top formations out there. The corrections we're seeing in the momentum names are very extended stocks that got very overbought with very aggressive flows that I think are correcting, not topping. You know, we can talk about semis, NVIDIA, Avago, Micron, they are not top formations. They are names that got very extended that are coming in here. I think ultimately those will be viable down the road. So you would say the signs here are, are all looking good at this point? Yeah, and I, I'm certainly... Um, uh, I'm certainly aware of the reputation for a correction into you know, August, September, particularly election year. But I think that has to be viewed in the context of what is an ongoing bull market. And we're getting support from the macro. I think dollar down, rates down, adds some fuel. I mean, look at the leadership, how it's evolved over the last several months. This, this, this um, move lower in rates has really catalyzed these bank stocks to a very meaningful degree here. I mean, you've had big breakouts, not just in the big ones, all these regional banks have really started to go.